Hello and welcome. Today we're speaking with Marc Poirion, and he's the Senior Industry Marketing Manager for Metals and Mining for Aspen Technology. So welcome, Marc. So today uh, we have a few questions, and I wanted to ask, where does Aspen Tech see the future of the digital mine? Thanks for having me. Um, and yeah, look, the, the digital mine of the future com combines the physical world with the digital world in perfect harmony through the use of technology that updates every aspect of the mind in real time, granting the ability to be more analytical, to gain more visibility, and to minimize the time to data for all decision-making processes, which will allow staff to be more proactive rather than reactive to the ever-changing literal and figurative landscape of their operations. A fully digital mind of the future integrates IT systems with operational systems, which is going to allow for digitalization, automation and continual op optimization of all connected processes in a given mining operation and the ability to understand the ramifications of any decisions on upstream or downstream processes. The future is, for me, a mine that exists digitally in the same way that it does in reality. A mine that's empowered by analytical tools that can predict and prescribe behavior a mind that's equipped with artificial intelligence that understands, adjusts, and optimizes a vast number of, uh, of manipulated variables to respond to ever-changing conditions to reliably and consistently to deliver to, uh, to key KPIs. A mind where the amount of human exposure to dangerous environments is minimized and one where the operation is run and managed as sustainably as possible as part of the core mission of the operation. Great. And given that, where do Aspen Tech solutions fit into that picture? Yeah, so Aspen Tech's got a vast portfolio of, pro of products and solutions that have sort of grown organically over the course of the last 40 years. But today I wanted to specifically focus on a handful of those solutions that uh, solve some key issues in mining, solutions that have already been successfully applied in a number of, uh, of mining operations. And when we think about the digital mine, the quote unquote digital mind describes so much that many, many people in the industry aren't really sure where the best place is to start or aren't sure they're going to derive the maximum return on the investment that they're making. So I want to discuss a few of the solutions that are available today, already proven in the industry, deployable typically within about a fiscal quarter, and that can show really compelling return on investment in relatively short timeframes. So Firstly, one of, one of the last things and one of the sort of key issues that, that we see in mining is, is any, any planning engineer, the last thing they want to do is redo their short or medium term plans. It's, it's time consuming, it's difficult, and mine managers always want an answer as to why it was necessary. And, you know, one factor behind having to do that is when mobile or fixed plan or equipment doesn't deliver to the projected KPIs in the schedule, even when tolerances are actually built into that schedule. So Aspen Tech has a solution that can substantially increase the reliability and predictability of plant and equipment using advanced machine learning to ensure that equipment availability is as close to 100% as possible. So that's that's the first sort of uh, the sort of first solution I'd uh, I'd like to discuss. The the second one is moving another issue in mining is moving data from one point to another or one point solution to another. And the challenge for many operations is, is quite substantial. It can actually have meaningful impacts on, on decision-making processes of not having data available at the right place at the right time. Staff need reporting analytics and insight into what's happening on the ground. And that can really only be delivered if there's a mechanism by which to move that data around. Aspen Tech has a solution today that is designed and built for this exclusive purpose and can be configured to do so in real time, ensuring minimal time to data, as well as integrating solutions that don't necessarily inherently talk to one another. So thirdly, the, uh, the, the mineral processing plants operate within extremely challenging environments in that mining organizations need to ensure they generate the maximum recovery of economic material to stay as competitive as possible and sustainable as possible, while also minimizing the consumption of energy reagents and more importantly, time. Variations of even a fraction of a percent on any one control variable can mean 
pretty substantial effects to the profitability of a given plant. And Asmatec has a solution that only controls many, many different variables in these operating uh, processing plants, but also continually optimizes to ensure operating, uh, you know, optimal operating parameters. And lastly, mines are, mines are ever-changing organisms, whether it's new technologies, underlying economics, or gradual development of all bodies. Mines are on some level constantly undergoing change. Some changes more profound than others, obviously. So how to respond to those changes presents a challenge because, as we know, mines are always running against the clock. We've talked before about the, the issue of time to data. But Aspentech has a solution that can allow miners, mine designers, process engineers, mine leadership, basically all of the stakeholders involved in mining operations to replicate their mines digitally, run what-if analyses and simulations on various changes they'd like to execute and gain insights into what effects those changes will result in. Fantastic. Thank you. I hear a lot about the preventative, predictive, and prescriptive maintenance. Can you explain the difference? Yeah, for sure. So the concept of preventative maintenance is pretty simple. Most of us already have a good understanding of it. It's, it's basically what we all do with our cars. We change the oil, we get the brake pads done, change the air, fuel and oil filters, pump up the tires, that kind of thing. In mining, obviously, it's a bit more complex because the original equipment manufacturers have schedules for when each part needs to be serviced or replaced at a given number of operational hours, but largely the theory is the same. Basically, fix things before they break so they don't cause larger issues when they do. We get our cars serviced so that they don't break down while we're on the highway or on the way to work. Basically, we want to avoid being inconvenienced by an unplanned event like a breakdown, specifically at a crucial time. And that, so it, it is unsurprisingly the conventional approach to maintenance that the OEMs recommend. But in reality, preventative maintenance doesn't necessarily always stop breakdowns, breakdowns at uh, inconvenient or crucial times. And anyone that's ever had to jump start their car or replace a tire on a highway or had a radiator overheat can, can attest to that. It's possible to replace failing parts as the maintenance strategy suggests, only to have other parts fail due to a fault somewhere else in the machine. Fundamentally, the, the, the downtime of the machine is not always avoided by a preventative approach to maintenance. Now picture this scenario. Instead of replacing things that haven't broken yet on the chance that they might break, what if your car could tell you not only that something is going to fail in the future, but also to suggest to you when? That would give you the, the lead time to get the, the correct underlying problem addressed in a time frame that allows you to plan your life around it at a time that's convenient to you and pretty importantly at a cost that you've been able to minimize because you're not ordering these parts at the very last minute as a matter of urgency not only that but it also removes the potential for your vehicle to break down on the highway or while you're on your way to work when you really really need it to do its job to get you from a to b now take that well it also means that you don't have to sit on the side of a highway and flag someone down to help you or arrange a taxi or an Uber to pick you up somewhere that's inherently dangerous. You're not positioning yourself in, a, um, in an environment that's inherently unsafe. Now, take that scenario one step further and imagine that your car can not only tell you that something's going to fail, when it's going to fail, but also what factors that have led to that failure and what parameters you need to stop, change or adapt to prevent that failure from happening in the first place in the future. Now convert that to a mining scenario. And what we're talking about now is a haul truck that no longer breaks down on a haul road or an excavator that no longer breaks down while it's digging up a muck pile or an ore body or a crusher plant that's actually always available at the time when it's needed. It means a warehousing strategy, a maintenance warehousing strategy that's informed by the equipment's actual needs as a function of its behavior and usage, rather than the suggestions of an OEM, meaning you buy and store parts you'll definitely need, rather than maintain a large stockpile of parts you may or may not. It means that instead of keeping two or three or four trucks on standby in case there's failures, you can drop that number back. 
-hmm. You can simply have less equipment because the equipment you do have is inherently more reliable. Not only that, but each equipment breakdown poses a safety risk, not only to the operator, but the surrounding equipment that now have to negotiate it as an obstacle. Repair crews dispatched to deal with the problem and their vehicles are now parked around that obstacle. So fundamentally, if you remove the failure, you remove the safety risk for all of the people involved dealing with it, which for them is a pretty profound effect. So add to that, equipment breaking down substantially adds to the degree of, uh, well, equipment not breaking down more to the point, substantially adds to the degree of certainty that mine planners can have with respect to delivering their short-term schedules. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, most schedulers will agree the last thing you want to have to do is redo your short or medium term schedule. So now we have a system whereby your equipment fails less, well, not at all in the course of its duties, where you can plan for the downtime that we'll need to address any upcoming failures with a lead time that allows you to plan your supply chain around it and the support maintenance activities around that too. And also minimize the cost of doing so with enough notice that if you have to, you can adjust your operational objectives without impacting or at least minimally impacting your short-term schedule. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, and so talking about APC, how do mining operations apply that technology? Yeah, so Aspentex APC technology successfully deployed in a number of mining operations. And our APC solutions are effectively a closed loop system that continually optimize, optimizes operations in the uh, in the presence of uh, process disturbances. For example, our solution has been used by a large Australian uh, lead zinc uh, mine when they upgraded their dual circuit froth flotation plant by adding several new stages to increase their volumetric throughput. The, uh, the APC system was able to manage each of the, uh, uh, the manipulated variables and produce series of control variables and understand how those variables change in the new cells in the plant. Given the circuit was designed to operate in series, even marginal changes at each stage of the process led to inherently compounding effects further down the, the, uh, the chain, leading to sort of suboptimal recoveries and concentrate grades because the recovery curves vary with each stage in the, in the froth flotation process and with each cell not to mention the variable grades being fed to the mill, which is a whole different problem. Um, the, the system had to constantly adapt to meet those changing circumstances, which the APC system actually does successfully. Mm -hmm. So it was implemented to basically gain control over these variables in each stage of that process to maximize metal recovery and concentrate grade. And the solution delivered a 1.35% a increase in metal recovery, which as a number doesn't sound huge, but when you scale it over the size of the operation, that actually led to about $2 million a year of additional revenue generated for that organization, which anyone will agree is, is quite substantial. Mm -hmm. So in, uh, in other operations, our, uh, our APC solution has been implemented to optimize comminution circuits, as well as to assist with reagent, uh, reagent usage, such as uh, controlling cyanide concentration or lime dosing to regulate pH levels. There's a, a quite a vast range of, uh, of applications for this technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for, for process engineers, the, the APC solution can remove a good deal of time and effort that goes into ongoing maintenance and manual adaptation of uh, curve calculations and optimal recovery timing, allowing processing engineers to make decisions when presented with information generated by an intelligent system that can continually optimize for the control variables that are deemed the most vital, be it time, recovery, energy consumption, reagent dosing, or anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, so let's talk about the enterprise historian technology. Um, how is that used in the metals and mining sector? Oh yeah, so as I, I sort of mentioned before, alluded to before, that one of the key, key issues we see in mining is faithfully moving around data from one point to another. Vast swaths of data are now being generated by all the new technology that's being used in the industry. Um, and managing that is, well, has gradually become more and more of a challenge due to sheer volume and the diversity of formats and the needs of various solutions or, or personnel and where that data is needed and where it ends up. Aspentex IP21 his, uh, data historian 
solves those challenges. And it's an open, scalable, secure and robust solution, which bridges the gap of operational technology and information technology and delivers a unique, simplified data infrastructure for all of the operational data. It's effectively a singular true path to enterprise-wide intelligence and is a kind of a key component to uh, um, to implement in, in one sort of data architecture. It maintains a single data model to enable a data catalog for governance of all your mining and, and other related data. And it, uh, it collects effectively all the operational data it's plugged into, structures it, brings it into context and makes it available to both the enterprise data lake and traditional operational technologies. And what this really means is the ability to integrate many of the different solutions that are used in the value chain seamlessly and in real time by storing, organizing, and analyzing data from a host of sources to create a single source of truth for all the systems and processes to increase your visibility, agility, and really diminish the time to data, really empowering end users with, uh, with the information they need to make the best decisions that they can. Great. Now, Azure Tech also has digital twin technology. And so how has that been used in metals and mining? Yeah, so digital twin technology allows mining operations to create effectively, it's exactly what it sounds like, digital replications of their operations to conduct analysis on what their operation currently looks like and what it could look like. And by introducing conceptual variables, be it plant, new equipment, changes in design, or any other modifications that are being considered and run what if analysis to see what the effects would be to estimate costs and understand the, uh, the downstream or upstream effects of any additions or changes to their, their existing processes. They basically provide mine planners with valuable models that either connect to plant data for continuous monitoring or run offline to safely explore and experiment with many kinds of variations to their operations, as well as to analyze the results without risking the plant performance. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And with all these solutions that you've just mentioned, what mine, I'm oh, sorry, what assets do mines usually start with? Sure, yeah, it, it, it depends on the type and the scale of mining operation, but typically for our prescriptive maintenance solution, we've seen our users apply it to all manner of fixed and mobile plant and equipment. Given that the prescriptive maintenance solutions based on machine learning technology, it is preferable to choose plant or equipment with more sensors than fewer. So the AI can learn more effectively from a range of different data sources. And ideally, the more historical data available, the better, but there's really no fixed rule. Mm -hmm. when, when looking at uh, APC, the system is largely centered around fixed plant, but again, the range of fixed plant that can benefit from the APC solution is quite extensive. I mean, each of these two solutions could be lent to you know, ball mills, impact mills, crushing and screening plants, load and haul HVE, recovery and refining plants. I mean, the key factor is less what type of plant or equipment it is, more where that plant and equipment has historical data mm -hmm. and sensors to collect more of the data to feed back to the solutions and increase the, uh, the knowledge base effectively that uh, the solution can leverage. Here. And so what are the data requirements for implementation? Yeah, it's, it's actually a surprise to many of our customers that they really don't need that much data to get started with prescriptive maintenance and APC solutions. I mean, as far as they go, they're initially driven off historical data. So the whole point is that whatever is available is what the system will work with. In the case of prescriptive maintenance, as I said, one of the key features is a machine learning algorithm that naturally needs to be taught. But again, the the implementations are developed, you know, have been developed on three months worth of data. And once in place, the system learns and continues to learn from the data it, uh, it continually collects. Naturally, the longer it runs, the better it gets. But our, uh, our customers can and do see value from, uh, from relatively sh small amounts of, uh, of historical data used to teach the systems. Mm -hmm. And what's the time frame for in implementation? How long does this usually take to be implemented? Yeah, so again, naturally the, the complexity of the implementation and uh, a host of variables come into play, but it's not unheard of that each of these solutions I've mentioned can be proof of concept, piloted or implemented potentially as fast as a fiscal quarter. I mean, it's 
that's a difficult question to answer because it's a bit of a how long's a piece of string. But um, mm -hmm. you know, the the, the uh, we do have people in place that can actually implement these solutions in uh, relatively short order that allow you know the uh, our customers to not only make the investment but show the investment in. Um, uh, in meaningful time frames. Yeah. Uh -huh. And speaking of showing the investment, what is the return of investment of implementing these solutions? Yeah, so again, it's with each solution, the uh, the ROI is obviously going to depend on the size of the project, implementation, and a host of other factors. But these solutions do actually show return on investment quite quickly with payback periods for, for some impl implementations being measured in months. So... Mm -hmm. That's uh, certainly worth consideration. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you answering these questions today. No worries. Thanks for having me.